Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the second lecture of the module 4, Introduction to Stream Culture for the course Advanced Aquaculture Technology. My name is Professor Gaurav Dharvomi, I am a professor from the Department of Agriculture and Food Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. So the concepts that I will be covering in this particular lecture is the introduction to the stream culture, the site selection, the design of pond for different type of stream culture systems and the pond management systems required for the stream culture. You know that shrimp is like the most traded and the most uh, one of the most valuable marine products uh, in the world today. It is uh, called as a uh, you know pinkish gold of the sea because of its great taste, its unique value realizations and also the increasing demand uh, like, like all over the globe. And also these shrimps actually uh, it accounts for more than 55 percent of uh, total shrimp production of the global uh, on in the global scale is actually accounts for the farm streams. Okay. So, uh, the major uh, um, the countries who are responsible for uh, this kind of farm stream production are China, Thailand, Indonesia, India, Vietnam, Brazil, Ecuador, Ecuador and Bangladesh. In general the type of species, the stream species that we farmed in India are as follows like the Pinus monodon, Pinus indicus, uh, Metapinus insis, etc. etc. So, you may, heard about, you may heard about the tiger prawn, white uh, tiger prawn and all we already discussed uh, about a little bit in last uh, se uh, semi, uh, lecture material as well. Okay. So, in general in India right now almost uh, 176,000 hectare of area is culture uh, is um, actually used for culturing of different kind of streams, 91 percent of it is actually used for cultivating the Lithopenius venami and 8 percent is for the Pinus uh, monodon and 1 percent is for Macrobrachium, macrobrachium rosenbergi. Okay. So, in general the Pinus streams if you see this is the lateral view of a Pinus streams uh, if you see its structure. So, it has this split pots you know if you see that this is like uh, you have it has this split pots if you can see this uh, it has uh, the specific uh, structural uh, difference between uh, the, then the other other type of um, streams are like it has this fourth abdominal segment which and also the dorsal carina on its uh, tensor tensor region. So, so this is this, these are the different type of uh, stream species that we normally culture in India like uh, the local name is like you know the white prawn like the Pinus indicus, the tiger prawn like the Pinus monodon. Are uh, pink shrimp uh, or the Metapinus dobsoni, which is not very common, but still people are uh, uh, people uh, are culturing it in Kerala and the Karnataka regions. Uh, marine streams, kari kari, brown shrimps, uh, deep sea shrimps, etc. So for each of the season, for each of the streams, in different kind of you know uh, this important stream species, they have their own peak seasons. Okay. So, in general the white prawn Pinus indicus are you can you know, almost uh, grow throughout the season like uh, throughout the year but only uh, other than the monsoon season whereas in case of tiger prawn it can grow uh, it, it has a peak season of around November to May, pink streams July to October. So, for different type of species it has its own pins, uh, peak season peak season. And the distribution if you see main, mainly the Kerala Karnataka region are the one uh, which is mostly uh, the, uh, you can find the abundance of this kind of uh, uh, different type of stream species, species in India. Other than that and if you go to the uh, if you come to the uh, West Bengal or Odisha uh, coastal region you will find that production of tiger prawn uh, a lot. Okay. 
if you further go to the andhra pradesh odisha this region if you for like go uh, further southern side of the uh, eastern coast like uh, metapenius monosegras uh, so there you will find this brown streams production um, the abundance of brown stream stream production in this uh, region so uh, in general the crustaceans like the stream they kind of grow in the process of molting okay which is like the you know shedding of the exoskeleton so they keep on uh, shredding the exoskeleton at a regular interval throughout their life well definitely it depends in case of young streams they usually mold like 2 to 3 times a day well as like juvenile stage it can uh, it the, the, the frequency goes up to 3 to 25 days so after 3 to 25 days they keep on uh, you know shredding their shedding their exoskeleton or the process is called the molting process okay so by which they are they keep on grow uh, during their uh, till their maturation stage the major sequence of events in the cycle is actually involve the mineral and organic reserve accumulation the elimination of old shell followed by the formation of the new exoskeleton the process which i already mentioned the molting or the egg diesis okay along with the uptake of water another other than that the rearrangement of the organic matrices along with the deposition of inorganic salts which also results in the molecular strengthening of the exoskeleton and majorly their exoskeletons are made up of different type of uh, you know calcium and magnesium products okay this mostly uh, this type of uh, this type of species and also they have a uh, they 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 do uh, they you know uh, like when their tissues are actually keep on growing in this kind of species they kind of replace their fluid the body fluid very frequently and this body fluid replacement is a major process for their tissue growth you know so in general if you see the whole cycle of the pinnate streams like so right from the egg which up to say like 24 hour of uh, period and then it, it is called the nauplius period though in the nauplius if you see it has the 5 to 6 instars in 2 to 3 days of uh, uh, sequence then it is called protozoal st uh, stage from there it, uh, it stays for like another 3 instars in 3 to 4 days and then it goes to the mysis and then post larva and then the ju juvenile stage ok. So, from juvenile stage to the mature final maturation stage requires around 180 to 300 days. So, all total around 360 around 350 to 360 days. Uh, require at the max from the for your year long production from the you know from the initial farm construct from your initial uh, you know um, um, the the post uh, preparation management pre preparation management to the the execution stage like after the maturation stage is uh, in reached the, if you want to netting out all the material so all this procedure takes around one year of uh, time period okay so in general when uh, th there are different type of stream species stream species you know stream species where uh, it required the, uh, the either the hormonal or the environmental manipulation for their breeding and sometimes they do not need it like in case of you know the like the examples that we have given like you know uh, lithopenus venomai or this you know uh, phenoropenius uh, chinensis and also this type of species they do not need they can uh, they can be readily mature mate and spawn in captivity okay but whereas uh, in case of penis monodon in case of uh, lithopenus venomai the wild stocks one stocks one they need some hormonal or environmental manipulation for reliable breeding in a captive uh, in a ca in ca captivity so before you start any uh, culture of any stream so what are the consideration what are the uh, factors that you need to worry about remember whenever you will be starting your own farm own uh, farm in this kind of uh, aquaculture practice using aquacultural species and all you have to worry about the site selection first that is the very first and foremost uh, criteria about the site from which type of species that definitely you have to search uh, for at the beginning then followed up thing will be like you know when you will be designing a farm what is the topography of that farm you know i mean like the what is the topography what is the natural ground elevation uh, you know that uh, at least uh, that you have to understand like from the mean sea level how what is the elevation from uh, there you have to maintain at least 1 to 3 meter uh, above the mean sea level this ground elevation because if you are not maintaining this particular height what will happen mostly they cultured in a uh, coastal region right in a tight fed tight fed, tight fed condition in a tight fed condition because in the high tide and the low tide uh, this uh, fluctuation the in case of high tide fluctu high tide uh, situation the water should come from the sea to your pond or to, to your culture area okay 
so that may that provision you have to provide using a proper design of sluice gate and all okay and a proper designing of a canal so using a proper canal design and the proper sluice gate design and maintaining the ground elevation of more not more around uh, like in the range between 1 to 3 meter above the mean sea level is like the standard practice okay second thing not less than 1 meter above the highest high tide level what is highest high tide level and what is lowest low tide level? So, you know the high tide level, low tide level it fluctuate uh, diurnally right. However, this highest high tide level it is like the uh, is the some um, some uh, particular days of a year. So, what happen the tide level reaches its, its maximum ok. So, when the difference between the difference from its mean sea level average means like a mean sea level to the high high highest high tide level is the maximum and the same happen in the lowest low tide level also. So, in general there is a average high tide level in general there is highest high tide level ok. So, we will be discussing we will be discussing more in details about all this uh, particular terminologies because there are lot of things to discuss about it uh, if I want to go in, de in details. So, but in uh, but uh, this particular subject does not give me enough you know uh, provision or the time period to go on more discussion about it. So, anyway maybe in future we will discuss about uh, we will discuss about it in details in aquaculture design of aquaculture farms and uh, practices. So, the site when uh, which you will be choosing it should be the near to the natural waterways like you know sea rivers or the stream region and with uh, it has to have a like at least a minimum vegetation cover you know to reduce the erosion soil erosion practice soil erosion and all and also to get rid of you know the, the, the erosion that can cause by the wave the it can be the sea wave it can be the, uh, the because of the wind erosion because of the wind factor and all ok. It has to has a easy site access uh, to the roadway ok. So, that uh, you, you can make it in a square or rectangular shape and have to have a ha you can have a dike with a proper uh, broad width. So, that uh, the, the you know the transportation wheel transportation car carriage and all they can come and um, or even uh, human transport or like you know manual like human transportation is also possible. It has to have a particular a particular width top width and I will be discussing about in details like what should be the top width based on the size of the pond and the based of the size of your farm. You know the uh, not only that like climatic situation is also a, a matter to you know really worry about short dry season and moderate rainfall throughout the year is the best suited for the stream farming. If it has a it has a long dry season what will happen just imagine if it is a it has a long dry season because of the sunlight because, because of the presence of the sunlight what will happen the water will keep on evaporating right. So, the if the water first of all you are using your stream farming is done in tight fed farm mainly or the pump fed farm also it is possible in general I am discussing about in general tight fed farm when the sea level rises you know that water because of the high tide situation the water from um, the sea it reaches your uh, farm ok. So, it when it reaches your farm so it is a high saline water it is or anyway it is high saline water no matter what uh, the whatever, whatever the coastal interference it does have. So, but with the evaporation what will happen the uh, the water will evaporate the salinity of your existing farm will keep on increasing which is also not good though stream can sustain a huge amount of uh, range of salinity level, but still if you if it the if had it has a really long dry season what will happen the water will keep on evaporating and because of that the salinity level will keep on increasing in your farm practice in your farming pond or farming uh, culture tank. So, that is not a good practice. So, you have to worry about you have to think about like you have to choose place or somehow manage situation when there is like you know the, the, the areas which are having short dry season and a moderate rainfall more much if it has a very high rainfall area that is also not suitable you know the reason right. If it is a high rainfall area what will happen Rain, because of the rainfall the, the, the pond will be diluted the one water will be diluted the salinity level grows highly like, uh, like it will decrease like anything it will reduce like anything and that is also not uh, good for your streams. So, stream needs a moderate level of salinity uh, for their uh, survival. So, that has to be maintained in your uh, in your culture pond or culture farm ok. So, these are the these are the things that you have to worry about before choosing a farm aquaculture farm especially the stream farming. Infrastructure no need to say about it you have to have a proper accessibility by road by waterways 
whatever means okay so so to have a you know proper supervision and also you can easily transport the materials and the products uh, the, the the final products it has to have a proper electricity supply like availability of the reliable and relatively cheap power source has to be available with a backup generator as a secondary power source and also if it is possible nowadays people government of india is really uh, pushing all the farmers or the fishermen or, or, or all the all the farm uh, practice uh, practitioners to go ahead with the uh, renewable energy sources so what you can do uh, near to your uh, stream farming you can just simply uh, shed it with the uh, solar panels and all or simply you can use the wind energy because anyway it's a coastal region there is uh, you know you can have a the, the wind will definitely uh, flow all the time so i mean like either from the land to the uh, sea or the sea to the land depending upon the uh, time of the day so you will get a lot of wind energy and it is really uh, really a good practice if you want to go ahead with the designing all the energy demand for your farm through the renewable, renewable energy sources either solar either wind either uh, you because you near to the coastal regions you can use the wave energy as well you just simply design those wave platforms and it will give you enough energy sources for you to uh, you know supply energy for all the necessary equipments all the necessary uh, farm um, necessities for your farms okay so that is also doable and now it is government uh, are also uh, different uh, government practices are also available you can um, go and ask the, um, the the experts available in this field so to design you with this kind of systems okay so proper security is another important thing that you have to worry about because otherwise what will happen the it there may be people from outside they will come and uh, steal your catch so that is not a uh, good practice anyway but you have to worry about that also you have to have a proper fencing and all availability of the proper equipment labor commercial feed and supplies definitely you have to have a uh, labor cheap labor uh, uh, as possible or not only cheap he or she has to be um, uh, you know well versed with the uh, techniques and all the necessary uh, you know the what to say troubleshooting uh, practices that is possible for your farming uh, for your farm and all okay proper equipments are needed proper aeration proper aerators and all proper uh, pump systems and all uh, the commercial feed has to be supply has to be available with the uh, minimal cost and uh, it has to be ha it has to have up all the possible nutrients possible for your uh, stream to you know grow faster and you know as it is said like the more you supply the good amount of animal feed uh, especially to the streams it they can uh, grow very fast and it is it is really a very uh, that that is the reason why it is called you know like the pinkish gold like in the sea so it, it, it has a lot of money and a lot of people are earning in crores uh, in even in india also uh, with uh, this kind of farming practices water supply uh, you have to have a water supply uh, you know, clean pollution free water supply both fresh water and the brackish water because brackish water culture water brackish water that you are supplying to your farm it is actually nothing but the high tide sea water right so before it reaches to your farm you have to have a proper um, how to say means of filtering out all the um, say larger sized foreign particles which you know which you don't need in your system definitely and uh, the all the other uh, filtering mechanisms that you can have to get rid of the materials which are uh, uh, you know detrimental to your farming uh, to your farm or can uh, cause choke or can cause some further um, hazard to your system so that you have to uh, think about uh, before while we will be designing just before the sluice gate or just after the before the sluice gate or after the sluice gate depending upon the size of the pond you can design those uh, filters and all soil condition uh, definitely it has to have a clay or loamy soil based uh, with more than 90% clay why you need more than 90% of clay first of all it kind of you know give you some uh, give you a uh, what to say it's like a, it will give a kind of concrete concreteness to your system first of all to your uh, pond bottom to your farm bottom why because first of all there is a chances of when the there is a low tide condition the water may uh, leach out from the from your pond if it is a some uh, it's a higher amount of sand is uh, provided and because of the sand the leaching uh, leaching efficiency leaching uh, possibility will be higher and because of that you may lose the uh, farm farm pond very farm water very easily 
and at the same time if there is like high tide condition highest high tide condition if your farm is already filled up with the water you can close the sluice gate no matter what the sea water uh, level is your dike and your uh, uh, pond bottom has to be designed in such a way so there will be no further penetration of uh, this uh, this uh, lower vicinity water uh, to your pond so that you have to make sure and for that you need to have a clay or loamy soil of around more than 90 percent of clay which gives us this uh, stability this consolidated effect then this ph of around 6.5 to 8.5 is necessary because sometimes what happen uh, when it goes uh, above 8.5 say the presence because of the presence of different ammoniacal product and all uh, or say below 6.5 or uh, like it may happen due to the different reason of nitrogen species that that can be present in the aquaculture wastewater because of the because of different uh, phenomena first of all uneaten fish uneaten feed uh, the, the excreta and all these things so anyway the soil condition when we'll be thinking about it the, it has to have a 6.5 to 8.5 i was thinking about the water but it's actually the uh, this is the, so, this is the soil ph that we are discussing here okay 6.5 to 8.5 it has to have this range the due to the uh, their porosity with sandy and silty soil should be avoided as they may result in erosion seepage of water along with easy waste penetration uh, uh, into the soil so this is the thing that i have already discussed acid sulfate soil is obviously unsuitable for the stream culture because that will cause um, the different kind of uh, irritation uh, uh, diseases for the streams the mangrove soil is also not suitable due to the accumulation of the hydrogen sulfide and ammonia at the bottom of the pond Optimum water quality parameters for say like pineous monodon culture is uh, as follows the dissolved oxygen concentration which is like amount of oxygen present in your uh, farming water has to be uh, in the range of 3.5 to say like 4 ppm uh, or like milligram per liter uh, salinity 10 to uh, 25 uh, 10 to 25 ppt water temperature around 26 to 32 degrees Celsius pH 6.8 to 8.7 total nitrite nitrogen has to be 1.0 ppm better be less than that total ammonia less than 1 ppm uh, what are the major sources of this ammonia and nitrate definitely the ammonia is first of all the uneaten feed it has a very high amount of protein sources and that will convert to uh, uh, the ammonia and all like using different because of the different kind of bacteria so and then this uh, what they do they again uh, this uh, the, the, there is a chances of having different kind of nitrifying bacteria which will again work upon the work on the ammoniacal nitrogen and it will convert it to the nitrite or nitrate so nitrate is really detrimental even ammonia if it is in free ammonia nit free ammonium from that is definitely not a good sign okay so these are the things that we need to worry about bod biological oxygen demand has to be less than 10 ppm chemical oxygen demand has to be less than 70 ppm transparency at least 30 35 centimeter what does that mean let uh, you could see with your naked eyes at least 35 centimeter below the surface of the water body so it depends upon the suspended solid level uh, and also it uh, depends upon the like you know the amount of uh, definitely the suspended solids which will cause the turbidity and which uh, will cause uh, this type of uh, transparency issues and also okay so that you have to worry about so that is another reason why uh, uh, sandy soil is uh, not preferred in this kind of situation in this kind of farming practices carbon dioxide level has to be less than 10 ppm and sulfide has to be less than around 0 0.003 ppm when uh, when we design uh, a stream uh, suppose a pond system any pond we will be de we are designing it will depend upon the type of stream culture system uh, what do I mean by the type of stream culture system uh, you know we have discussed in earlier lectures there are different type of culture practices in aquaculture right extensive which is like very least human intervention is required it's like very huge area with all the natural amenities possible there uh, presence there semi-intensive intensive etc etc right so here we'll be discussing uh, the I, I'll show you I'll discuss with you the what will be the optimum design criteria for uh, this different type of stream culture systems whether it be extensive whether it be semi intensive or be the intensive one okay so in case of extensive agriculture e extensive stream culture systems we have to have a you know it's not mandatory but it has to have a uh, irregular shared pond of more than 1.5 hectare you know what is hectare uh, 10, uh, 10 to the power 4 square meter so it has to have a more than uh, that size 
uh, containing a peripheral ditch of width of around 4 to 10 meter for the you know transportation purpose and all and a height of around 40 to 80 centimeter it can go up to 1 meter also. Okay. The ponds are filled with the gravity flow water generally during the high tide period and the natural seeds are normally included and left uh, for like 60 to 90 days in absence of additional seed stocking and feeding and the stocking and density can be 0.5 to 5 pieces per square meter and such ponds are normally uh, usually uh, partially harvested. Okay. Why it is not completely harvested definitely it is a very common sense because if you completely harvest it in the next season there will be no you know like um, there will be you will not get any further culture uh, at all from your farm. So, it is partially harvested and especially when it is uh, the the, 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 the all the potential uh, the brood stocks are you know properly left sometimes in the uh, pond so for there you know further uh, harvest further harvest harvesting period and all okay, for the for the next season next season in case of semi intensive one it's not as high as you know more than 1.5 hectare but it is somewhere lies between 1 to 1.5 hectare and constructed with the dikes uh, you know capable of holding 1 to 1.5 meter deep uh, water and with a 10 to 15 post larva per square meter of uh, stock uh, stock intensity and in general sometimes why it is called semi intensive you know it remember right you have to supply you have to have you need you need to provide some amount of human intervention like you provide some amount of commercial feed uh, because sometimes what happens the the natural feed that is available for the pond is not sufficient enough. So, or maybe the uh, stock intensity as because the stock intensity is much higher. So, because of that they need additional amount of feed. Okay. So, then uh, we supply the commercial diet and all and we normally harvest it within 90 to 120 days after the stocking. In case of intensive culture it is it normally lies between 0.5 to 1 hectare and can hold up to 1.5 to 2 meter deep water and it is it is actually the intensive one. What does that mean? You you are you are having very high density culture uh, of your targeting species and with a stock intensity can reach up to 60 of 60 number of post larva per square meter. Okay. So, it generally requires a reservoir of uh, like say no less than 30 percent of the pond area. The feeding rate will be like 4 to 6 times per day you can easily imagine right. Like the how the with the feeding rate it is like 4 to 6 times per day. So, amount of uh, you know human intervention that it requires it it needs a strong aeration that is one of the major issue because uh, it is it is a continuous it is a continuous process and it is intensive process it's a intensive a huge number of uh, target species are dwelling in your farm. So, they need huge they consume huge amount of diesel oxygen and the presence of no natural alternative can provide them with the additional amount of oxygen that they require. So, in that case we need to provide them with the provide them with the aerators and all though it can be surface paddle wheel aerators and all it can be submersible one somehow you need to provide them with the additional amount of oxygen. Okay. That oxygen will be dissolved uh, like actually we are providing with them providing actually air right. So, from air whatever the 20 like around 21 percentage of uh, 20 20.9 percentage of uh, oxygen that is available that will dissolve in the uh, the in the water and that water is actually now it is enriched with the diesel oxygen and which is actually required it has to have a, a range bit around 3 to 4 uh, 3 to 5 uh, ppm of uh, do as we discussed right so that has to be maintained in case of open system uh, a very high supply of good quality water needs to be maintained uh, it requires the water exchange of more than 20% of the total pond volume and stocking density of around 60 post larva per square meter and stream can grow to around like 25 to 30 gram uh, within 120 days which is like within 4 months and uh, though it is a less fa uh, favored method of culture uh, by the farmers and we discussed about recirculation system in earlier lectures also you know we take the water out of the uh, pond we treat it and we uh, you know like kind of give it back to the system. So, that is how we are minimizing the water requirement we are utilizing the we are somehow reducing the economic uh, impact though they it it comes with some amount of capital investment at the beginning when you design the uh, this kind of treatment units. So, anyway so the stocking 40 to 50 percent of the pond area in general we 
uh, we, we, we may require for construction of the water reservoir, treatment pond, sedimentation pond, drainage canals, etcetera, etcetera. And you may have some additional amount of small treatment units as well, the uh, water, treatment, water treatment units as well. So, it also has a, it can also sustain with the stock intensity of around 30 to 50 post larva per square meter of around culturing, culturing period of around 4 months. Okay. Then there comes the minimal water exchange systems. So, in case of minimal water exchange systems, when uh, the recirculation along with the recirculation system, what is the positive thing about it? Like in this particular case, it involves minimal water exchange and it to reduce the contact with the outside water. What does that mean? Outside water, what is the outside water here? It is a clean sea water, right? The clean sea water, when it is filled with the clean sea water, uh, when it is filled with the sea water in the high tide, high tide situation, it does not come along with uh, the foreign uh, living organism, it does come with the foreign living organism, right. So, so it may cause different kind of disease causing, disease causing uh, microorganisms, it can come with some predators which are not beneficial or harm can be harmful for detrimental for your uh, target species. So, that is why the minimal water exchange system are the desired where once the seawater is captured in high tide situation, then we put the sluice gate off and when we try to uh, use the same water again and again in the system. So, to minimal minimize the water exchange with the open with the sea water. Okay. So, that will reduce you know kind of that will eradicate the any kind of competition or the predators uh, effect or the any kind of how to say the, the harmful microorganism that can cause diseases to your system. It can be stock intensity of around 30 post larva is possible in this kind of systems with uh, almost uh, 100 uh, more than 100 days of culturing is required with an average uh, weight of 10 to 20 meters. So, other than that, when we go for the pond management, uh, the first is the pond preparation, waste accumulated uh, in the pond during the previous farming cycle must be removed, followed by the conditioning of soil and uh, water before stocking the new cycle definitely. Pond cleaning, it involves with the organic and uh, phosphatic waste uh, that you have to remove from the bottom. It can be done by dry method, you just completely uh, dry the pond and then clean it or you can do it by wet method. where uh, the dry method you just have to keep it in like you know sun uh, sunlight for uh, 10 to 30 days dry in the sun and manually or mechanically you can remove the waste hard waste and then solid waste and in case of weight method it is more favorable because it takes shorter time because uh, in this case we go for um, we flushed out the waste using the pressure washing and uh, we uh, it is suitable for the acid sulfate areas also and sedimentation pond um, for the settlement we can involve the sedimentation point of the settlement, settlement of the suspended solid at the end. Another important thing in this particular uh, field that I want to discuss about it is, is liming. After cleaning the pond, the pond is filled with whatever the left overnight uh, over with the uh, flushing out of the debris and increasing the pH of around 7, right. And then we followed it with the agricultural lime or the calcium component of the dolomite and used to you know when the pH is of the water is near neutral. And we sometimes use the hydrated lime when the pH is below 5. So, these limes are actually used to de de depending upon the pH of the soil and it is it has a lot of uh, important uh, aspects of utilizing treatment of the like we call it conditioning of pond, we call it conditioning of the pond before starting your farm. Okay, it is very important to provide it with the different kind of calcium um, minerals. In general, we go for this uh, calcium carbonate or calcium hydroxide etcetera at a rate of around 100 kg per hectare per day to maintain the required pH. We have to eradicate the predators, we can use uh, the liming method, we can use the tea seed powder to use the to for killing the fish, snails we can easily uh, eliminate by using the quick limes or the calcium oxide, hypochlorite doses we can do to eradicate both the vertebrates and invertebrates from your systems. Uh, an application of hypochlorite in the pond with the properly aerated followed by the fertilization is uh, on day 3 is the perfect way to do this kind of job and then you start stocking of uh, post larva uh, on day 7. So, that is how you prepare the pond when we go for the uh, culturing of the streams in uh, uh, in your farm or in your um, uh, tight fed farm or pump fed farm whatever you are designing for which is utilizing the sea water coming from the coastal region. So, in conclusion uh, we can say we discussed about different countries which uh, 
are the major producers of shrimps like China, Thailand, Indonesia, India and what are the type of species the most important commercial shrimp species like the Litopenius venomi or the Penius monodon that is famous in India and what are the factors that involves uh, and uh, while we will discuss while we uh, f uh, selecting a particular site for our farm and what are the climatic and uh, the, 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 the general con consideration that we need to design we need to think about before going for pond construction. We will be discussing more in details in next coming lecture as well. So, the major takeaways uh, again you can see uh, the pH is also important factor, the soil conditioning is very important, liming and all we discussed. Uh, you better uh, you know think uh, like it is a very important information that we discussed in this particular lecture and really uh, take this um, uh, remember this information. Uh, these are the references that I used. Uh, so, thank you, see you in the next uh, lecture.